Hey, you know, somebody, uh, you guys know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm no more for my wow than I am my preaching or anything else. Um, but I want to just tell you that I'm, I'm, this, it all started. Somebody asked me recently, like, why do you do that all the time? What's that all about? Well, it's a habit now. It just became a habit. Um, but it started because I realized I was melancholy in nature and that I was always just kind of like nothing was a wow. And I decided that this is a way that I would meet the moment as, mo- as often as I can in a day, in a church service, wherever, by just saying, wow, 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 wow. Because it's positive, it's up, it's like, wow, look at God, wow. Look at you, wow. Look at life, wow. <laughs> so now our church, of course, the last few years, I mean, it's on our merch and everything. Wow, 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 wow. But how about you turn around and tell somebody, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Misa just turned around and told Allie, wow. You wow. Wow. Good morning, everyone. How many of you are glad to be here today? Team Church is all about equipping people to build churches. Equipping teams to build churches that impact communities for Christ. And today I want to just get, I want to get a little more practical. Last night was fun, wasn't it? It it was fun and we enjoyed ourselves. I I don't know when the last time was, whether I'm speaking here or speaking somewhere else, you always have a clock. And last night I told the the service team before, you know, in our pre-service huddle, I said, I don't want no clock. And I apologize to you guys because I didn't know they had 20 minutes planned after us, after me, to honor me. And so, I don't know if I should be apologizing, but I just preach longer than I ever do. Like, I got a little crazy. And, uh, but we had fun and I enjoyed it. And from now on, I have a clock. So, today I want to talk about leaders, teams, church, and checkers. And again, I want to just kind of dial it down and get as practical as we can, and hopefully helpful today. In this analogy, by the way, the, uh, the pieces, the checker pieces are, they represent individual people. And, and the checkerboard represented the place where people come together. And the first thing I thought of when I saw this checkerboard is I thought, well, all the blacks are over here and all the whites are over here. And it reminded me that when I first came to the Northwest, Sheila and I first came to the Northwest, we came to a bedroom community and the whole church was, was this. And we started praying that it wouldn't be just this. And one Sunday morning, a black couple showed up. And after the service was over, I jumped off the stage and I ran to them. And we were in multiple services and they were sitting in the middle and the, 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 we were, you know, we'd, the building had gotten packed out and so the aisles were just jammed with people trying to get out of, the building and and so I just went over the seats it was like this right here I just went over and they were right back there somewhere and they saw me coming like <laughs> and uh, the rest is history because I, I said to them look I know you look around and you say like maybe I don't fit here but I want you to know I've been praying that you would come here and if God brought you here please don't leave and he became my personal assistant for about 12 years so I just wanted to begin by doing something like this today. <laughs> Cause that, that other, that was, that was a bucket we talked about last night. And I wanted to get kingdom bucket going right now. This is what the kingdom's supposed to look like. Okay, now we got, got that out of the way. Um, 
Is anybody thankful for the church? Are you thankful to be a part of the church? Glad to be a part of the church? Okay, so Scripture says in Philippians 2 and 2, it says, make my joy complete by being, what, like-minded. Everybody say like-minded. Like Having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. People coming together is what forms the church. Alone, we can do so little, but together we can do so much. If you want to go fast, an African proverb says this, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So coming together is the beginning. This is Henry Ford. Coming together is the beginning. Staying together is progress, and working together is success. Everybody shout together. But here's the first thing I want to observe about checkers is that, and how it applies for us today, is that in checkers, every piece is submitted to one mind, to one goal, to one plan, to one direction. Every piece is submitted to one plan, one mind, one goal, one strategy. And that's what makes a team. See, there's a, there's a difference between a group of believers and a team of church builders. You can be a believer and not be a church builder. And if you haven't figured this out yet, this is something for everyone who is a part of the team that maybe help you not be frustrated all the time with the people who kind of are, are a little more distant and not as involved and not there like you are and your house and your team is, is just to understand that everyone who attends is not aligned. <laughs> people that show up at church are no different than people, and I don't mean in as far as right standing with God, I'm just talking about human nature. They're no different than any other, any other group of people. For example, you have a group of people on an elevator together. And they're on the elevator together, but they're, they're in the same building and they're sharing some space, but they're going different places. And they get off at different floors. And they have completely different plans for the rest of the day and the rest of their life. <laughs> right? And perhaps they'll bump into each other again for a little while on Sunday morning. But there's a difference in a group and a team. And that's where church leaders have a responsibility to differentiate between the attender and the aligned. Between the crowd and the core. And the differentiation just can really help us as church leaders to know who's in the group versus who's on the team. Thank God for the group. Welcome the group. Smile at the group. Don't be mad at the group. <laughs> but don't expect the same commitment from everyone. Keep calling people onto the team and keep focusing on the fact that God brought them to the house and you're thankful they're there. Don't condemn them to hell, fire, and brimstone because they're not at the team meeting. But just differentiation is important in church leadership. I was talking to a small business owner recently who's really overwhelmed and frustrated and trying to serve the needs of, of her clients. 
And basically it was a tailor shop. It, it was a lady who owns a tailor shop. And I went in there, I go in there and I get pants hemmed and all of that. And, and she, I, I said, man, you, 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 look, you look like you're overwhelmed right now. I was trying to give her a little breather and joke with her a little bit. And she said, people don't want to come to work. <laughs> I could tell she's on the verge of firing some folks right then. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know how you feel. They don't want to come to church either. Like, it's just crazy right now. Yeah, we had that little moment, you know. But then I'm thinking, and she's even paying them. And so I'm like, really? Like, they don't come to work and you're like, to get money? She goes, they don't need to come to work to get money. They get money. It's just not fair. I'm the owner. I got to work. I got clients. And my two employees, they don't want to come because they're getting paid for sitting at home. And I'm like, God bless you. Lord bless you. I'm like trying to figure out how to stay a pastor in the moment instead of cussing along with her when I felt like it. But <laughs> lots of people right now are just not showing up, right? At work, at school, at church. And church teams have experienced. We've all experienced. Don't think it's just you. We've all experienced a lot of volunteer distraction, volunteer desertion, is that a word? Desertion? <laughs> you know, it, many, many of you who are pastors today and team leaders have seen your team shrink. And it would be a really easy time for us to be discouraged, to settle into complacency, to live stuck in the setback of 2020. But I want to just say to you, there's, this, there's an upside to all of this. We have an opportunity right now to revamp, to revise, to rethink, to retool, to rebuild our teams. <laughs> There's two things that we're doing at Champion Center to move forward. And, and I'm talking to you about this because I, I'm, I'm just trying to explain that I think it's an opportunity for us to get into greater alignment. Like there, there's, there's a team is many members, one mind. So a couple of things that we're doing, and I want to suggest, and I think we'll have these on the screen, is first of all, just purge and refresh your database. Like, just hit the delete button. Just good for the soul. <laughs> the old pastor, the old preacher, you know, he's talking about people leaving his church and they, 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 don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. You know, it's like, goodbye, goodbye. You know, just, Again, I'm not trying to tell you have an attitude, but I'm not to, you got to, you got to, at some point, you got to just say, this is what we got. Thank God for what we got. I'm not going to mourn my losses. And so just, just take those names off the list. Like who's gone is your first question. Remove them. Who is with, who, who are you unsure about? Ask them. Like ask them. Like, where are you at, man? What, in your head, in your mind, your heart? Like, what's going on with you? Just, I just kind of want to know how I need to think about you right now. And thirdly, who's with you? And if they're with you, that's another reason we got to get out of mourning stage, because there's people ready to rock and roll. They want to go. So if they're with you, revitalize renew like re-strengthen retool it's better to have 10 people who are all in ready to move forward than 20 who are half-hearted uncertain uncommitted The second thing that we're doing that I, I want to share with you and recommend is make some new team goals. Make some new team goals. And I recommend, from the, this being August, 
Just set goals between now and the end of the year. Every team leader in the room, this, this, is, a, this is for you. Just set some, some team goals. Rather than continuing to just ask that same question, scratch your head, where are they at, when are they coming back, how is this going to happen? Like just purge, let go, start to fire up what you have, and then just set some goals. And here's some goals that I'll, I'll recommend. Team relationship goals. Bring people together. Blend, mend, strengthen relationships. Have fun together. Engage, interact, hang out. Secondly, training goals. This is a great time to, to go through your orientations and your training books and redo them. Update them. We found out that some of our, our, our manuals and our orientations are 10 years old and get rid of them. Like we just, it, it's a great opportunity to go back and get all of your training material up to date and current and then take your current team through that. Another one is just reorganize as you reorganize those goals, reposition some current people. Shake it up. Like, like, like there have been people you wanted to move. This is your chance. This is your chance. Like, like you would actually do better if I move you here. Like make a move. Everybody say make a move. See, nothing happens until you make a move. There's a whole lot waiting on us to make a move. And instead, oftentimes we hesitate. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. I get all of that. I understand all that. I'm just telling you right now is a window of opportunity. Make a move. And set some team growth goals. Okay, set some team growth goals. Where do you want to be? How many members? How many, how many members of the team? If you went and you looked at your database and you, uh, and you got really honest about it, you used to have 30 and now you have 14. Like 14 all in. Where do you need that to be? You want it to be 20 by the end of the year? 22 by the end of the year. Where, where do you need it by the end of the year? Okay, set the goal. Be vocal about it. Commit yourself to it. And let's get moving forward, building the team. Here's a great question to ask as well on the team building part is, do you know who has started attending in the last 12 months? Because like last night, I was having a conversation with a couple different pastors, and I'm like, how you guys doing? How's you? And you know what? Across the board, it's like, well, a lot of people walked out this door, and a lot of people walked in this door. That's what I'm hearing everywhere. People are coming into our churches. And that's what's happening with our church. People are coming. But oftentimes, if we're not careful, we're thinking about the people that are going instead of the people that are coming. So not only do you want to purge the database, you want to go the extra mile to know who that person is. Who that couple is. Who are those people? Like, figure out how you're going to kind of do what I did. I, t I went over the chairs and got to that one couple. You know, do, do whatever you got to do to get to your new people. Get them in. If you have a growth track or however you do that, like, get them in there. Get them going. Welcome them to the team. And, and if you don't know, I'm just, I told our team, I'd go to our business office and ask for all the names of the visitors. Every team member has permission. Go and find out every visitor card, everybody that's come, everybody that went to, you know, went to Growth Track. And let's go, let's just go heart and soul into the new people. Is that helpful? Am I, am I helping you today? Okay. Okay, so secondly, each piece on the checkerboard finds its value as it becomes part of the greater whole. And I, I want to I wanna emphasize this today, is that this, this piece over here is out of the game. Like, it has no purpose. This piece has no purpose. 
But when it's brought together with the rest, it becomes part of the greater whole. And I'm just going to ask everyone, pastor, all through the team today, I just want to ask you, think about this. You don't want to be that person. And obviously you're here and you don't want to be that person, but I hope it strengthens you and, and galvanizes your appreciation for the fact that our value comes in being a part of something bigger than ourself. I want to I wanna just read... Uh, This is Romans chapter 12, and most of you are familiar with this, but if you would just read it with me slow enough to, to, to grab the meaning, it says, the meaning, it says, each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us and if your gift is prophesying prophesy if it's faith or if it's serving serve if it's teaching teach if it's to encourage encourage if it's giving give generously if it's leading do diligently showing mercy do cheerfully I want to say this, and I, I, I hope it's in writing behind me here, it goes up. It doesn't matter who you are or how gifted you are. When we lose sight of the privilege that it is to be part of the team, you become a liability to the team. And pastors, I want to say it's not just them. When you lose sight of the privilege it is to pastor your church, you become a liability to your church. When the opener happened last night, I hadn't seen the opener. And when they went through the timeline of church history, I, I got emotional. Like, we're, we're three minutes into the conference, and, and I, I feel like I'm going to break out crying, you know? And, and, and what was sweeping over me, and I know many of you felt the same thing, was gratitude. Like, gratitude for our history, and gratitude for the longevity, and gratitude for all those who have come before us, and all those who have fought to be where we are right now. And that gratitude, that, that I get I get to do this like we get to be and I haven't always felt that way and I don't know you know I, I there were times like o over the last couple of years where I'm like just take this job and shove it I don't want to be here anymore <laughs> like, like you know like you you feel emotions and but my point is I can't pastor effectively if I don't keep the privilege in my heart We, we get to be part of God's great church. We get to invest ourselves. We get to invest our gifts and our resources into something bigger and greater than ourselves. If you're a worship leader in the house this morning, if you're a children's leader in the house this morning, if you're a person who has the good fortune of being joined in to a group and a team and you're on assignment i want to encourage you don't ever take it for granted remember it's a privilege it's a privilege it's a privilege to be part of god's great church A lot of people, of course, all of us uh, are, are grateful, first of all, to just be a Christian. Yeah. And I, a lot of people stop there. But a Christian is what we are individually. 
The church is who we are collectively. And I think a lot of people take stake in the fact that, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. You're saying I'm not a Christian because I'm not connected to the church. I'm not involved in the church. I'm not, and they get defensive about it. Sometimes people don't realize and this, this has happened over and over in our 30 plus years of pastoring. I've watched this happen over and over. And I don't know who, maybe in this room I'm going to help somebody who will remember this moment and what I'm about to say. And it'll help you and save you in the, uh, in the weeks or months to come. But a lot of people don't realize the privilege of being a part. Or that they lose focus on, on that. And so as they lose focus on that, they begin to drift away. And they begin to not be as connected. Or they just attend, and when we beckon people to get in the game, they hesitate. But for one of those two reasons, they stay on the perimeter. And here's what I've watched happen over and over and over again. They are not involved, and they're not active, and highly connected. They're maybe waiting to be asked. And then one day, they look around, and they see others are meshed together. Others are knit together in a way that makes them now feel like they're outside. They're outsiders. I see it in people's eyes. I can tell you right now, people in our church family who are going through this right now. Because while many have drawn close, some have done this. And they're like, I just want to come to church. Leave me alone. Like, you get that attitude. They hang that do not disturb sign on the door, you know, like. And we all respect it. We're like, yeah, okay. Campus pastors, location pastors, like, yep, okay. Don't I want to ask them again? Like, nope. And then one day they start to realize, you know what? They're all, they're all like really connected. And, like, they're all, like, really, they walk in the same room, and they're, like, on the same page, and they're high-fiving, and elbowing, and like, whoo! Yeah. They're all hanging out. They're, like, having a blast. They're, like, and pastor's asking them to do this and having them do that, and, they, right. and I'm just over here. Wow. Yeah, great example. Great. They're in the group, mm. but they're not aligned as a team. We've respected that. And then this little voice starts whispering in their ear, making them feel like an outsider. I don't belong here. I don't really fit. I don't really know. I don't. And they think they're not wanted. But in reality, they position themselves as a grouper, not a teammate. And they don't even realize it. Have you guys seen that? (laughs) Not just our church, right? And so while we're respecting their choices, they get to the point where they're like, nobody's friendly with me. I don't really have any friends at church. And I watch it over and over and over again. You can take this a couple of ways as I talk about it. Number one is that you can just realize you don't ever want to do that. Take responsibility for staying all in and plugged in. It's nobody else's responsibility to keep you close. It's your responsibility to stay close. And secondly, when you hear people say, nobody's friendly, I got no friends, no, and they've been around for a while, don't all of a sudden take on a bunch of guilt that doesn't belong on you. Don't, don't try in your own mind to go, well, I could have done this and I should have done I, I know that's natural. But I'm trying to, after 30 years of passion, I'm trying to help some of you today. Like, you can't control that. 
We can talk about it like I am right now. But when people hit that point where they have set themselves up to be more distant, and then one day they realize in a negative way, like I'm not really connected, and then they start to blame somebody else, don't take it. Like don't, 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 don't ride that guilt. Like you got to let that play out. Hopefully they understand. Hopefully a good friend is bold enough to say, what do you mean? You're the one. You withdrew. You pulled back. You weren't on the team. You didn't show up. You didn't make a commitment. And can I just, I'm going to pause there for a minute and just say, if you're a spouse of somebody who is really involved and really on the team and you're here today, make sure you don't allow yourself. When you get home and you're, you know, everything's in a routine to, to complain. You, you may think you want more of them <laughs> at home. You may think you want more, and the truth is that your marriage, your home, your life, your children, your future is in being connected to the church in a way that is not just attending but being aligned. That's where health is. That's where strength is. That's where hope is. The church is God's idea. We didn't make this up. This is God's plan. Five benefits of serving on a team. Got to go through this really quick. When people serve on a team, they feel good about themselves. When people serve on a team, they become more connected to the church and set the course for their family for generations to come. When people serve on a team, the church is stronger and more effective in its mission. When people serve on a team, God blesses their life. When people serve on a team, they are less likely to drift away from the church that God put them in. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. Don't apologize for encouraging people to get connected. Don't back up. Leaders, don't back up. Don't take on the dialogue. Like, well, you know, we just don't have time. We don't, we can't. That's when you kind of got to do that thing of let people be who people be. But just understand life and strength and help and hope is in being connected. A part of one body. Many members. Thirdly, on checkers is something I found out about checkers. I did used to play a little bit, but um, is that when you advance, advance in mass. Advance in mass. So, so the point is that when you try to advance one checker, it won't get very far. The idea is that teams surround, teams have to, once you surround one another, like that, if the opponent is here, they get here, they can't, they can't take this guy out. Right? Very good. right? Yeah. You can't take, and, and, and this is straight Bible. <laughs> like we are better together. Yeah. Yeah. So as you advance, when you're going forward, talk to one another. Pastors communicate with your team. Really yeah. Like say, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm feeling. I need you to have my back. Here's why I'm doing this. This is what I do with our team. Here's why I'm doing this. Here's, here's why, why I'm going this direction. This is why we're going to open up the doors in September, even though they say we're not supposed to. We're going to open up church. And, and hey, I know, I know people are going to criticize it. I know people are going to say it. I know people in, that go to our church are not going to like it. They're going to So guys, get my back. Here's my reason and let's go forward together. Advance in mass. See, you don't have to be against your team to weaken or hurt your team. All you have to do is hesitate. All, all you have to do is pull back and not move with. That's all you gotta do. All you gotta do is overthink because when you overthink, you underact. <laughs> I'm not saying don't think. Please keep it all in perspective. I'm just saying when it's time to move, move together. When your leader says, let's go, let's go. 
Don't be complacent and don't be indecisive. And it really might be a time at this conference right now for some of you to pick up the pace and stop mourning the losses and start celebrating the gains and come alongside your leaders. <laughs> come on, it might be time for some of you to help pick up the momentum. Like some of you who have been a little quiet, a little bit hesitant, a little bit leery. I hope pastor's doing the right thing. How about you stop thinking that way and you just come up alongside your pastors and say, Pastor, I love you. Let's go. Let's go. Go to your team leader and say, hey, what's that goal that Pastor Kevin was talking about? How many we need by the end of the year? I want to help you recruit. Let's go. I can take, I can take seven or eight no no's if I can get one yes. Let me, find, let me find that yes out there. I'm looking for the yes, looking for the yes, looking for the yes. Let's go. We go forward in mass, right? So just help pick up the momentum. Be a momentum maker, not a momentum breaker as a member of your team. Next point, sometimes you have to lose to win. Right? We all know that as you move forward, as you advance, you'll lose that checkers oftentimes. You'll lose the one piece in a strategy to get two or three. I know Jesus told the story about the lost sheep. <laughs> I know. I know every person matters. Okay, I, I, I know. I'm presenting you with another angle that's not even associated with that. I'm just saying sometimes leaders make a decision to move forward that will cause some people to leave the team. Yeah. 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 And leaders often know before you make the decision that I've got some loss coming here. I got some loss. And I just want to encourage you as leaders, take the loss. Sometimes the loss has to happen for the gain to happen. Not making the move means not advancing forward. And this can be one of the toughest things for leaders to do because leaders care about everyone and they want to bring everyone along. But how many of you remember the story of when God was preparing Gideon? He had 30,000 church members. It's like, God, you want me to do another cut? Like, all the way down to 300. How many of you remember that when some people walked away from Jesus? They walked away and Jesus kind of looked around and said, anybody else want to go? Yeah. 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 Anybody else want to go? You can't take this stuff personal. Yeah. We are kingdom builders. We are advancing the kingdom of God. And there's going to be some losses. I said, there's going to be some losses. I just hope any of you who are mourning losses and mourning people that have gone and mourning stuff that's happened get really healed up over, over these three days. I just hope you get so healed and so whole and so well that when you leave here, there'll be this miraculous transformation in your own heart as teams and leaders that you can go home and go, thank you, God, for every loss we've had to take because I know there's a gain that's coming. I know there's progress that's on the way. I know good things are going to happen. The last, the last point about church and checkers is that promotions and titles are bigger opportunities to help your team win. So what happens, I got to do this quick, but what happens is that when one, you guys know this, try not to be too elementary, but when one goes all the way down, it's called king row. You get to the other end, you go through a growth track. You're faithful on the team. You're able to, like, make things happen. And your leader says, 
hey, would you be a team leader? You get a promotion. In my book called The Proving Ground, I talk a lot about this kind of idea that we go through proving and then we get to a point where it's all about the promotion. And once the pawn becomes a king, they're empowered to turn around. They're empowered now to turn around and use their position to help te their team win. They're now, they got more influence, they got more power. And King's Row, hear me out on this, King's Row is different for all of us. Everybody in here is not supposed to be a pastor. You're, you're going to hear from Nathan Finocchio in a little while. Nathan is not a pastor. I talked about this last night. In the body of Christ, we got to get, we got to get people to the tables that have different gifts and have been crowned in their area. And some of you are supposed to be team leaders. Some are just supposed to be, I don't mean just, but you're, you're, once you get to being a location pastor, don't just think automatically, I'm supposed to be a lead, I'm supposed to have many campuses and be a lead pastor. You're a youth pastor, don't just assume, well, I'm supposed to be a lead pastor. Like everybody's king row looks different. And if you've never heard about the Peter Principle, go, go Google it. The Peter Principle is what happens all the time and that people get promoted to their highest level of incompetence. Yeah. And it happens all the time in life. All the time. It's very common, right? So that's, we don't want that. Don't force promotion. Let promotion come from God. Yeah. That's great. That's good. But King's Row is different for all of us. Because our gifts with which we serve are different. But here's my point, is that any honor that comes your way, any glory that comes your way, is just another level of opportunity. If people admire you, if People respect you. Can we put that up? I want it readable. If people follow your lead, use it to encourage, mentor, serve, help, and always to build the church. There is nothing more disappointing than seeing people who have been promoted to a platform or a position in the church to not use that influence to build the church. And I want to encourage you, whether you're a business leader, you've arrived in your space. You're in a marketplace. If you're, if you're a leader in any sense of the word or you've been promoted into some area right now and people respect you, don't just absorb it. Like, people admire you, like, and you can tell, like, wow, you're now, you are somebody, you got a title, like, I heard you're the such and such of the church now, you lead the youth group at such and such location, and don't, don't puff up, don't, like, go, yeah, I am, like, stop it, use whatever admiration comes your way to build the church, to build the church, if, if, if somebody sees that you're an amazing service coordinator or, you know, you're, you're an incredible thinker and the, the, the leadership team is honoring you and placing you and putting you in spots of, all I'm saying is whatever honor come, whatever admiration come. Those are things God gave you. Those are gifts God gave you. Don't you dare for one minute make it your own. Turn around and serve the purpose of God. Build God's church. Amen? Amen? Come on, build God's church. Build God's church. <laughs> Lord, I thank you today for every person in the house.
And I boldly declare your word does not and will not return void. We sense your presence, your power last night, this morning. And I thank you, God, that there are shifts that are happening in our heart, things that are happening in our mind. As we take notes, it's not just on a piece of paper. It's not just on an iPad. But God, that's going into our heart. And I pray in the name of Jesus, line on line, precept upon precept, you'll continue to do throughout this day, through tomorrow, what you've already begun. So that all of us give you more glory and more honor with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.